Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at Delta Airlines. This is an interesting one. And to be honest, if I could go back, I probably wouldn't do evaluation on this. Um, but uh, let's see, stock price 46.82, about a $30 billion market cap. Um, so this one I think has a lot more intricacies than I was really expecting. Um, but I'll, I'll walk you through my analysis and um, you know, I think it, it could be, you could use the template as a good starting point. Um, but uh, we definitely tweak a lot of things um, within it. So I guess um, first I'll just high level the output, right? I'm getting between 21 and 31 billion. So I get, I get a valuation range that's there. Um, you know, I think a big concern with them is when we look at their balance sheet, right? Their debt is at 27 billion, um, which is pretty significant to be honest. I mean, for a company that's cash flowing, you know, two to one to three billion pre-COVID projections going from three to five billion. Um, interest expense is going to eat away at their um, their cash flows, I think, to be honest. Uh, they're going to have to, I mean, I'm going to guess, I, I didn't look at the debt schedules. I'd guess this is 10-year debt with pretty low interest rate, but um, could be could be concerning, especially um, if they have a lot of fleet upgrades they need to do, um, could get expensive. So could be a tough play. But anyways, real quick, income statement. So the way they had it broken out, they don't give you COGS. So I just recategorized the buckets of expenses they gave us as what I considered would be COGS. Um, it's not super material, to be honest. It's just how it flows through on the sheet. We project out each of these lines individually. Um, but I mean, you can see 2018 revenue, right? 44 billion, 47 billion. Then obviously COVID hit down to 17 billion. OPEX, 39 billion, 40 billion, 30 billion. A lot of OPEX is pretty fixed, I believe, within kind of this industry in a sense. It's not, I mean, it's like slightly variable, but I mean, you can see, right? Their OPEX didn't really drop, even though revenue, you know, decreased 50%. And that's with a $4 billion government grant of free money. So, I mean, really their OPEX was what, 30 4 billion. Um, so, I mean, it, it's relatively fixed. I think it grows as revenue grows, but um, nothing too material. Um, and then, I mean, you can see interest expense, right? It's billion dollars a year right now. Um, so, you know, if you have that eating away at a quarter of your, your earnings every year, um, could be interesting to see. A um, couple things off the cash flow statement, DNA, right? So there's a lot of depreciation in this business, but there's also a lot of investment in PP&E. Um, most of it, right, flight equipment, that's going to be planes and then ground PP&E. This is really, if you read through their 10K, pretty interesting. Um, they build out a lot of kind of the airport terminals. Um, so LAX, LaGuardia are some big ones they're working on now. If you've flown into LaGuardia recently, you know it's complete giant mess terminals like all under construction outside some pain so that's part of this delta thing where they're trying to redo it um but create a couple schedules down here feel free to download and kind of edit some of these inputs um so the ones in gray are really the ones that'll drive the valuation on the model and we'll walk through here in just a second what all these are and um, i mean i guess technically all of these should be in gray as well um but so they give us the revenue schedule and, you know, part of me, after I started looking at this and I was kind of too far in to turn back, I think, realized that this gets pretty tricky pretty quick. They provide a lot of metrics about like average seat miles and um, cost per seat and cost per seat mile and all, all of these other metrics that, to be honest, if you wanted to do a much better and much more in-depth model, definitely like read into those and do some of it. But um, I just kind of jumped into this, someone recommended it. And I was like, you know, that'd be interesting to see, you know, the post pandemic play, like, could the airline bounce back? How would things look? Is it realistic? Um, so start throwing it together and here we are. Uh, but they break out revenue in their MDNA. Um, so passenger revenue, cargo and other, and then within the other, they actually break it out. It's these three business lines, ancillary business and refinery, loyalty program and miscellaneous and um, there's some notes I have hidden here in column B that say what these are. So, I mean, this provides aircraft maintenance to third parties, um, their wholesale operation for vacations, and then refinery, refinery sales to third parties. So they own a refinery that they use to refine jet fuel. This year, refinery sales were up because they actually stopped refining jet fuel to refine other um, oils and gases and sold those. 
loyalty program, um, brand usage by third parties. So I, I think this might be like the Amex Delta card. I always thought it was under the other way around, but it, it appears that like Amex or someone would pay Delta to be able to offer Sky Miles and get people to pay the subscription fee um, to use the card and be able to redeem it. And then uh, redemption of reward points for non-travel. So if you go redeem your like airline miles for like a magazine subscription, there's some portion of that that gets kicked back to Delta. Um, and then they don't have to recognize the, you know, the, the offset of kind of miles to being redeemed for flights. And then the last piece is miscellaneous, which is lounge access for the most part is what it made it sound like. And then code share. I wasn't entirely sure what that was, but it um, sounds like it's mostly like lounge access. Uh, so my guess is something similar there, like priority pass or whoever probably pays them a fee. And then if users bring a guest or if someone just checks in, um, it's not super material to the business, but the first part here really was try to estimate, you know, some of these revenue numbers. Can we? Is it easy? Is it going to be difficult? You know, how, how do we really think about this? And um, my first thought was, so 2020, you know, that was a horrible year. And I think they said they operated at like 49% capacity. Um, so my thought was, okay, they're going to have half a year here of operating at full capacity. I'm going to assume June going forward people are traveling a ton to make up for being cooped up for the last year. The vaccine is pretty much widely distributed in the U S this is domestic, I would argue. Um, so, you know, obviously they have international travel on here, but from the domestic standpoint, you know, I think that's probably fair. So they're going to get almost back to 2019 levels, but not quite. And that was kind of my thought for all of these services. Cause they all kind of tie, right? Like business cabin, main cabin, um, loyalty travel awards. I'm not entirely sure what that is. And then travel related services. I think this is like checked bags, like cancellation fees, reroute fees, things like that. So I'm assuming most of this comes back, right? Like you're still gonna have a dip from 2019 and 2018, but substantially improved from 2020. Cargo, this is interesting. It's actually been decreasing. And in 2020, they even note that like cargo was, um, they had a huge surge in cargo revenue because they've been charting planes just for cargo. But like, when you look at it, it's still down from 2019. This leads me to believe that like, potentially they're just not needed as a cargo provider anymore. Um, so I had it decreasing in the first year and then it just kind of held it flat. Um, other, I mean, this is, so here's the schedule for the other down here. So I actually broke this out. Um, so the ancillary refinery, this one's tough because it's like maintenance of planes um, and then it's like refinery sales. And to be honest, as much as I wanted to build out a model, kind of trying to predict the fluctuation of like how much jet fuel they produce versus other fuels and then fuel prices, all that. I was like, that's way too complicated for something that's not that material to the business. So I just held it flat loyalty program. Um, this, I had it kind of almost rebounding back and then just kind of like a slow, steady growth. Um, which is kind of similar to like historical growth rates in this industry or like mid single digits, to be honest. So I was kind of just pegging that to there. Miscellaneous, they've actually seen impressive growth from 18 to 19 here. And I don't know if this is like, um, I know with like the Amex Platinum, you get access to the Delta Lounge and there's this whole surge of millennials that are going Amex Platinums and CSRs and, you know, all the travel perks that come with it. So I was like, you know, actually, I think that this will basically, you know, bounce back almost. And then from there, um, still actually have a healthy growth rate because it was a growing kind of business segment prior to the pandemic. And then just slowly kind of reverse back to that mean. Um, so with all of that, right, we go from 40, 40 billion in 2021, which is lower than 18 and 19, up to 70 billion. So not quite doubling revenue in 10 years. Um, and that comes out to a growth rate, right? The next two years are pretty healthy growth rates, but that just gets you back up to 2019. And then kind of back to the historical growth rate average and slowly declining down um, as they get to become a bigger and bigger company. Now, you know, I, I don't know how confident I am in these. these this is kind of like my gut analysis here. Um, and, you know, be, being that I ended up getting evaluation close to that of the market cap, it makes me think that this is probably somewhere in line with kind of general thought out there from, from Wall Street and institutional investors. Um, you know, I don't know if I missed anything super crucial on the revenue front, but the next tough part, I think, really is the expenses. Um, I mean, this is a super low margin business, right? Like if we look just from a flow through perspective, right, you have 47 billion in revenue and 
10% flows through to net income. Uh, OPEX, you know what I mean? You have just a ton of expenses that are just eating away at your profitability. Um, and I, I added some notes in here in the pages from the 10K that they're on. Um, so some interesting things here. So like salaries and related costs, right? They have a note um, saying that they expect salaries and wages to stay lower than 2019, even after COVID. Um, so what I did here is I just took an average of 18 and 20. My thought here is like, they're gonna ramp back up. They're gonna hire people for new capacity, right? Expansion, but it's not gonna ever get back to this level. So kind of, you know, somewhere in the middle of 18 and 20. And then from there had it um, grow kind of at like the historical level um, around 24%. Or as sorry, not grow um, as a percentage of revenue. These are all as a percentage of revenue. Um, I felt like that was the best way to look at these. Um, aircraft fuel. I mean, this one's a doozy, um, and that's why I didn't even try to touch this one with like a ten foot pole. But they had to know um, they had lower fuel costs. It was driven by twenty one percent decrease in fuel prices and then fifty one percent decrease in capacity. So right, fifty percent less flights and then twenty five percent cheaper fuel got you to 2020, my thought is you double it, right? And the fuel prices go back up because there's more demand because there's more flights, uh, but you're not quite at 2019 levels of revenue. So you're probably not gonna be at 2019 levels of, of fuel. Now this doesn't really, you know, you could probably build out an entire model of fuel prices um, and it would probably be necessary. And, you know, we can see, right, fuel prices, like as a percentage of revenue, like fuel prices were actually higher this year than in 19. Um, so, I mean, from that, that would lead me to believe, right, like higher capacity, right? The fuel cost isn't quite a variable cost. There's like a fixed component to it where, you know, you, however you want to look at it, but I just kind of pegged it. I mean, this range was 19%. I held it there to keep things simple. Um, regional carrier expenses, right? Just pegged this back to 18 and 19. That was pretty constant. Um, you know, and that's, I mean, if you look at these, that's pretty much what I did for all of these. They're all just very constant. And the only thing that isn't is, um, so for restructuring charges, those aren't gonna repeat. And then for government grants, um, they have a note in Q1 of this year, they got a $2 billion um, government grant from the payroll COVID relief. So, you know, that'll happen this year and probably not gonna happen again. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you can see they go from 88.1% total operating expenses as a percent of revenue to 86. And then I have them, you know, slightly down this year, but that's because of the government credit. And then from there, right, it kind of just goes back to, you know, basically the average of 18 and 19. Um, I would say that this is like a very baseline gut check if you wanted to see if like, is the current valuation like plausible? Um, I'd say, yeah as long as you assume that they can service their debt. I think that's gonna be the big thing. And, you know, obviously, right, if they actually rebound and they have strong top line and they can't make a debt payment or something, they'll be able to find a bank to refinance it all day. Um, I think they still have like a triple B rating or maybe a double B. So, I mean, they're not, you know, it's it, it's still a good rating for a corporation. Um, so um, I don't think they'll have problems in the future, but I don't think, um, there's going to be this, I don't think there's a lot of massive upside, but I mean, with that said, if you got in, right, if we look in the last year, right, I mean, just the run up, right, like, and it, that doesn't even include March of last year, right, like, if we let, I guess they didn't even tank until, eh, they started to tank, yeah, there we go, March 1st, right, like, if you got in this at 25 a share, you're already doing great, right, you're already back, you know, you doubled your money. Um, and then there's a run, there's a run up, right. As vaccine news and just optimism kind of comes. Um, and I think they actually released Q1 results. I was going to pull that up so we could see if they're even like on pace. Uh, yeah, they released these today. Wow. Okay. Um, when I started making this model, I don't think I saw it this morning, but then I refreshed and saw it later, but let's just kind of look and see how's their Q1 revenue even looking. Um, not good. Right, so this year is going to be rough for them, probably, just based off this. Um, I mean, obviously, this was pre-COVID. These are pre-COVID levels. So 
they're still operating at a 50%. So they're still operating kind of on pace. Um, so, I mean, looking at that, I would think that this 40 billion is probably gonna be closer to like 30, something like that. And you're actually gonna end up getting probably a lower, a lower valuation. So you could try to model out 2021 and then adjust the growth rates forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, just looking at that, but let's see operating expenses. I mean, their operating expenses are half as expensive. They still have some restructuring charges in there. Oh no, that's that's the government grant. Um, a little bit of restructuring, but not much. So, I mean, realistically, that's still six and a half, but um, still still a loss there. Uh, and I mean, yeah, like aircraft fuel. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. It'll be interesting to watch them this year to see how things kind of play out. Um, but that doesn't seem promising. And then let's see, how's their debt? Are they paying EBIT down? This is 26. What did they have at the uh, end of the year? 27. So, I mean, they paid off a billion five of debt. Um, that's not bad. So that's a good sign. Um, but yeah, anyways, I, I think that, um, you know, you could use this model as a as baseline, but um, if you understand all these drivers a lot better, it uh, might help. But it looks like a lot of these things are pretty constant. So, I mean... I would say 2021 is probably going to start out a little slow and pick back up in um, 2022 to get back to kind of 2019 levels. Um, so, you know, maybe you have a little bit less cash flow here, you know, billion less. And let's see, you know, subtract a billion there, it just lowers your valuation a, a billion dollars. So, um, I don't know. Interesting one. Love to hear your thoughts and comments. Um, you know, I, w I went into this one thinking it would be uh, interesting on the lookout and then soon realized I know nothing about the airline industry. But at that point, I was so far into reading the 10K, um, I said, screw it, let's just throw this together and uh, see how it comes together. So uh, thanks for tuning in.